Greetings everyone. Welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench I have a Class D amplifier board. So what I want to do is measure its power draw from the power supply versus its output power and figure out what its efficiency is and how much power it dissipates. So this is a continuation from the last video where I tested a Class AB amplifier. I got a bunch of measurements and I graphed the output here. So this was the output power. This is just wattage here. So I have the total power off the supply, drawn off the supply. And this is the dissipated power, meaning dissipated by the circuit, not the output power, but dissipated by the board. In other words, the transistors and uh, resistors on the board. And it's not really surprising if you know how those amplifiers work, but I thought it was interesting to show how the dissipated power goes up as you lower the output power. And this is measured with a sine wave. So at maximum clean power, power dissipation is a bit lower. But as I lower the output signal, meaning uh, less output power, the, the amp's dissipation actually went up before starting to fall back down again at lower and lower output powers. So I got the uh, all these values here and the efficiency. So what I want to do is measure a Class D amplifier and make a comparison. As you might know, Class D amplifiers are supposed to be much more efficient. You, know, you don't need as large of heat sink because they're not going to dissipate power. They can run up to over 90%. However, I'm going to guess that in the real world usage with the coils and everything, the actual efficiency will be a little bit lower. In the previous video, I used a 4 ohm load, which I will use here as well. And that will uh, tend to skew the results lower. Same as with the Class AB amplifier. So what I'll do here is take one measurement on camera and then I'll take all the other ones off camera and I'll come back at the end with the results. Okay, I hooked up the signal source through the preamp so I can adjust the level easy. I have everything hooked up here to the amp. Output's connected to non-inductive 4 ohm load, scoping off the load there. And I'll run the amplifier at its maximum recommended power, uh, voltage of 24 volts. And I'm using parallel mode because uh, at the highest power measurements, I might exceed the current limit of my supply with one channel. So having the parallel mode is kind of nice. Let, let me get you pointed at the scope here. Okay, let's let it rip. So I'll adjust this guy. Ah, there's clipping. You actually hear it ringing. We're at one kilohertz. So I'll tune this out of clipping so there's no distortion. Right about there. And I have to put more waveforms on the screen if I hit and grab the right knob and turn it in the right direction because the scope won't give you an accurate voltage measurement unless you have uh, at least, I don't know, six or eight waveforms on the screen. So let's see what our voltage is. 14.69 it looks like. Okay, so 14.69 volts RMS squared, and we'll divide that by 4 ohms. Putting out 54 watts, well, 53.94 watts. I think that's a little better than I got when I was testing this amp. I think I was just shy of 50 watts, but, well, that's what the measurements give me, so that's what we will run with. The current draw off of the supply was 2.66 amps at 24 volts. So that's 63.84 watts. So if I take 53.95 watts of output divided by 63.8 Four watts of input. I'm getting an efficiency of 84 and a half percent. 
So that means the amplifier has to dissipate 9.89 watts. So that shows you that even though it is class D, it still has to dissipate about 9 watts. That's a lot of wattage to dissipate from that tiny little board and heat sink. But of course, that is with a continuous sine wave. With music, it's not going to be nearly as bad. So what I'll do now is continue taking measurements and then come back with the results. Well, here are the results. So this column is the output voltage. Aside from the maximum clean power, I stepped down one volt. You know, I couldn't tune it in perfectly. I got as close as I could to each voltage level all the way down to zero. This column is the supply current, output power, total power, dissipated power, and efficiency. I was actually impressed with the efficiency. I thought it would be lower in real world measurement with the forum load. We're getting 84.51. I'm not sure if it was a measurement anomaly, but it went up a little bit here, but then dropped slowly as I went down in output power. So why would this be lower in a real-world measurement? Well, again, with the 4-ohm load, there will be more losses in the amplifier, plus these output chokes, these coils here, there will be some losses in those. These do get a little bit warm. Plus this board has these reverse protection diodes. So if you hook the supply up backwards, it won't blow up the chip. And the diodes have a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volts. They're silicon. And if you multiply that 0.7 times the supply current at the maximum clean output power, it's about 1.8 or 1.9 watts additional loss. So yeah, this number could be higher, but it's, it's not too bad really. Another interesting thing with the efficiency is if we go down here where we're still above 80 percent, output power is now you know less than one-fifth, yet the uh, efficiency is still pretty high. So that's where you do really well with these Class D amps. At lower powers, the Class AB amp, the efficiency really drops, but with the Class D, it stays much higher. I also did a graph here, and yeah, nothing really that interesting. The dissipation is pretty low. I mean, we start around 10 watts, and it just drops from there. So how, how does it compare with the Class AB amp? Well, first of all, keep in mind that these are different amplifiers. This is not bridged. It's the JAT501 is a class AB with a 64 volt total supply. And the class D board is bridged running at 24 volts. So we have to look at percent of output power when we do comparisons here. So if you remember, we were still above 80% at about one fifth power. So one fifth power on the class AB amp, since we started at about 92 watts. It'd be yeah, somewhere around here. You can see we're around 30% or below. Whereas with the Class D we were 80%. Another thing I like to look at is the 1 watt power. This is probably an average power using music in a listening room. Maybe a little bit much for some people or maybe a little bit low for people who crank it but you know, one watt average music power would be pretty loud in a listening room with, you know, stereo sound. But if you remember with the Class AB, we needed 16 watts of input power, and 15 of that was being dissipated, leaving us with one watt. So here's what the Class D board did at one watt. It only needed, you know, just under two watts total power versus 16. Now, because we're looking at a percent of the actual output power, it'd be more fair to use the 2-watt uh, the line. The closest is 2.28, but still, the total power was 3.36 watts. And we'll look at one more thing here. At the 50% point, which, be, which would be around 25 watts, 
Yeah, look at that. It's still 84%. Very good. And the uh, AB amp. Let's see here. Let's see on this one. The 50% would be around here. We're down under 50%. You can't really just look at the uh, maximum output power with the sine wave because, you know, this is 65 and this is 84. Really not a huge difference, about 20%. But it's down where you would normally be using the amplifier. That's where the Class D shines. Well, there you have it. Just showing how much better Class D is as far as efficiency and, you know, power dissipation goes. That doesn't mean it's my favorite class of amplifiers or anything like that. There's a lot more to it. So that will wrap it up for this one. What I'd like to do is a class A amplifier. If you thought class AB is bad, especially at lower power levels, just wait till we take a look at class A. You know, it's terrible at even full power and just gets way worse from there. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.